Hello and welcome to News Click. I'm Paranjoy Goha Thakurta. And with me here in the studio, I have Pradyut Bora. Now, the reason why I've called Pradyut Bora is not because he is currently an entrepreneur running a Gurgaon-based startup providing air, air purification. Air quality. Air quality That's services right. and equipment. Right. The reason why I've called Pradyut to the studio of NewsClick is because I'm going to ask him a few questions based on his earlier avatar as a founder of the Bharatiya Janata Party's information technology cell in 2007. He resigned from the BJP's national executive in February 2015, has very, very strong views on what the IT cell of the BJP is currently doing. But before we discuss this subject, Pradyut, I'd like to ask you a few questions about the 20th December the statutory order of the Ministry of Home Affairs allowing eight agencies, including the Intelligence Bureau, the Narcotics Control Bureau, the Enforcement Directorate. Ten. 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 I stand corrected. I stand corrected. Ten. Ten. It includes the Directorate of Signal Intelligence, Ten. which operates only in Jammu and Kashmir, the Ten. Northeast and Assam, Commission of Police, Delhi. Yes. Ten of these agencies are today empowered or sought to be empowered to intercept, monitor, and decrypt any information in any computer, including your mobile phone, your smart mobile phone. So India has become a surveillance state. Big Brother is watching you. You know, one would have been uh, a little circumspect to draw such conclusions were it only this order of the Ministry of Home Affairs. But, by the, but going by the way, the government has kind of harassed or intimated media, intimidated media in the last four years, the way the government has used uh, the police and uh, these agencies, these government agencies to go after specific individuals. Who are all critical who of the critical, Narendra Modi government. Absolutely, who are all critical of the government and the prime minister. Uh, so, looking at this entire trajectory, one gets the sense that uh, this is a natural corollary to what was already happening. Pradyut, this statutory order of the Ministry of Home Affairs, according to the government, according to the Home Ministry, there's nothing new. It is merely, it's an old order. No new powers have been conferred onto any of these ten agencies. And essentially what they are claiming is that the internet service providers, the telecom service providers and the intermediaries, they, this notification codifies the existing orders. And in each and every case of interception, monitoring, decryption, decryption the competent authority in Delhi, it's the Home Secretary, in different state governments, at different persons. So there are, according to the government, adequate safeguards. What are your views? Absolutely not. Absolutely, Bankam. A couple of things. First, if we already had adequate legislation, adequate uh, legal infrastructure in place, why have a new order? and that too just about six months before the election, four months before the election, yes, that's right. right? First, number one. Number two, time and again, the courts had to intervene again and again to, uh, you know, to speak about privacy, to explain privacy. Uh, and the courts have been very strong on their uh, comments on privacy issues and fundamental rights. I mean, it's been categorically stated that the right to privacy is a fundamental, fundamental right, right of every citizen. Of every citizen. Now, in that particular case, the first step of the government should have been to come out with a data protection uh, legislation. And following the data protection... That is still in the pipeline. It's still in the pipeline. So without having an adequate data protection legislation, to come out with an order like this 
And more, more importantly, more than the substance of the order is the signal that it kind of sends out. At the time it has been sent. At the time it has been sent out. So I think the one mustn't forget the optics, you know, the signals that have been kind of sent out that uh, should you not behave, should you not, uh, you know, do uh, whatever the government or the past to be want, this is going to uh, be, you know, the government is going to come after you. So it's not just that Big Brother is watching you and if Big Brother doesn't like what you're you writing see, or putting on your computer, then absolutely. Big Brother will take action against absolutely, you. Absolutely, absolutely. It is just a reinforcement. It's a reinforcement of the government's, you know, you know vindictive attitude. Uh, which uh, has been going on for the last couple of years. Pradyut, perhaps it's not a coincidence, but the day after this Home Ministry statutory order or notification was issued, on the 21st of December, a five-page set of draft rules were discussed in the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology with representatives of Google, Facebook, WhatsApp, Amazon, Yahoo, Twitter, ShareChat, the Internet Service Providers Association of India, and the Securities and Exchange Board of India. And there were also uh, present representatives of the Cyber Law Division of the Government of India. Now, this so-called confidential meeting, following that, these draft rules were made public. It's now available in the open and all or anybody can respond to it by the 7th of January. But many believe that these changes that have been proposed in the information technology intermediaries, guidelines, rules to, I quote, deploy technology-based automated, automated tools or appropriate mechanisms for proactively identifying or removing or disabling access to unlawful information or content. Now, government says, you know, there's so much fake news on WhatsApp, there have been mob lynchings, and people like you and people like me have been complaining, so this is our way of ensuring that you know, these uh, service, uh, social uh, media platforms that provide end-to-end -end encryption are held accountable. The other impression is that we are actually moving back in time from the 2015 Shreya single case where the Supreme Court repealed and struck down Section 66A of the Information Technology Act on the ground that it was arbitrary and against the Constitution, the fundamental, due, uh, fundamental rights of citizens in the Constitution, your views. Well, you know, I'll take a step back from both this uh, recent order and this entire discussion about uh, information technology and privacy. I'll take a step back and go to the entire, entire theory of social contract. We as citizens, we are perfectly fine about giving us, giving up a bit of our rights, giving up a bit of our privacy in the interest of national security, right? If the state can ensure safety and security to all its citizens, there's absolutely no harm giving us, giving up a bit of our- uh, Right to privacy. To right to privacy. So to that extent, it's kind of fine. The problems come in when the government does not, uh, you know, uh, does not communicate about the limits of surveillance. When the government does not communicate enough about intention. When the government's actions are diametrically opposite to what it professes. No pre-legislative consultations before Absolutely. you put out these draft rules. Absolutely. No, no, no pre-legislative consultations. Even if you drafted something arbitrarily without taking public views into account, no checks and balances, right? So in that particular case, I mean, why should we as a citizen, why should we as a citizen feel comfortable enough about the government taking this big brother approach. So, 
you know the the you know the government the most natural thing for the government is to speak about national security you turn left they speak about national security you turn right they speak about national security now this bogey of national security rashtriya suraksha rashtriya suraksha you know khatre mein hai khatre mein hai desh khatre mein hai now for this for 5 years we have been hearing this spiel of the prime minister pehle kabhi desh khatre mein hai kabhi hindu khatre mein hai kabhi prime minister khud khatre mein hai Now the point is, we all understand what Khatra is. We all are concerned citizen. We all want a safe and secure India, right? But at the same time, this is not at the cost of privileging one political party or one ideology over everything else. I want to ask you here a question. You were one of the first, perhaps the first, graduate of the Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad. to join the bharatiya janata party and you had great admiration for the then prime minister of india the recently uh, he deceased shri atal bihari vajpayee absolutely and rajnath singh ji who is now our home minister he actively encouraged you to not just found an information technology cell in 2007 and this was mind you just a year after facebook had been launched, launched. and twitter, twitter had, had been, been launched. launched yes absolutely and the whole idea from what you yourself have said the idea was to use ye jo aadhunik jo suchna prayukti ki hai ye desh ka jo rajneta hai aur desh ka jo aam aadmi hai in log ko aap nazdeek lene ka koshish kiya magar aaj jo bharatiya janata party ka jo social media cell ban gaya इसके बारे में आप क्या कहना चाहेंगे आई थिंक द बीजेपी सोशल मीडिया सेल हैज अंडर गॉन द सेम ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन दैट सिमी द स्टूडेंट्स इस्लामिक मूवमेंट ऑफ इंडिया हैज अंडर गॉन टू द बेस्ट ऑफ माई नॉलेज वॉट आई हैव काइंड ऑफ रेड इन पॉपुलर मीडिया This was not the objective. Today, Simi is, of course, a terrorist and a ah, and a, pro, it has and a been proscribed, proclaimed as a yes, yes as, 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 as a, a as banned a organization. Banned organization, ah. right? But to the best of my knowledge, this was not why the Simi was formed. It was formed as a popular student movement to uplift a community, to make their youth dynamic, and so on and so forth. And I believe the founder of Simi today is sitting in the United States. He is a professor of you know mass communication and the organization he gave birth to today has become a band organization would you will get in a frankenstein ka monster frankenstein ka monster dr frankenstein acche aadmi the magar wo jo jo monster monster taiyar kiya ki. the monster came and you know ate him so similarly i think uh, the it cell was born with very very noble intentions it was born during the course of a journey that uh, mr rajnath singh and i were taking together between kanpur and lucknow and he happened to ask me wo do ghanta ka safar mein aap log kaafi kuch baat chit kiya big pn he has said that ha pradeep ji ek cheez bataiye jo hame party mein karna chahiye jo hum abhi nahi kar rahe and i said information technology suddenly a bulb you know uh, lit up you know lit up in my head and i said it he said kyun hum to company nahi hai so maine kaha ki sir main management ka chhatra hu aur hame sikhaya gaya tha ki it is far cheaper and far cost effective and easier to retain a customer than to get a new customer तो अगर कॉर्पोरेट सेक्टर के लिए सीआरएम सही हो सकता है सीआरएम का मतलब है कस्टमर रिलेशनशिप मैनेजमेंट तो पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज के लिए व्हाई नॉट वीआरएम वोटर रिलेशनशिप मैनेजमेंट और राजनाथ सिंह तो को बहुत पसंद है अच्छा वीआरएम से आप आज एक बहुत खतरनाक एक आ, क्या कहते हैं आप बोली तुलना कर रहे हैं कि भारतीय जनता पार्टी का जो सूचना प्रयुक्ति आई सेल के साथ आप सिमी के साथ तुलना कर रहे हैं आई मीन आई एम जस्ट गिविंग यू द काइंड ऑफ ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इट हैज अंडर गॉन राइट ऑफकोर्स भारतीय जनता पार्टी आई टी सेल इज नॉट अ बैंड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इज नॉट अ प्रोस्क्राइब ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इट इज अट इज द ऊबर नेशनलिस्ट प्लेटफॉर्म एज दे वुड लाइक टू से बट वट आई लाइक टू से इज 
this is not why the IT cell was created. The IT cell was created with a very, very noble intention to reach out to the public because that is what information technology uh, facilitated. Okay. Now, in February 2015, right. okay, after the Narendra Modi government had come to power sure. in May of 2014, you choose, chose to resign from the Bharatiya Janata Party's national executive. Right. You said that you did not wish to go along with the party with which you were joined. There are very few IIM Ahmedabad graduates who join a political party in the way you did. And you found that you couldn't support or endorse. Ye jo vik, jo vikti kendrit, jo pura krendit jis tarah se uh, alag alag decisions le rahe the, jis tarah se party ka prabandhan chal rahe the, that you couldn't endorse the individualized and centralized style of decision making of Sri Narendra Modi and Sri Amit Shah. Is that the only reason why you quit? Well, that was the primary reason. You know, uh, when I joined the BJP in sometime in September, October 2004, I think within a month or so, I attended a training program. And the first lesson that was given in the training program was the president presides, the team decides. So that was the culture of the BJP, we were told. The team decides and the president presides. And then, and then after the team decides, the president will go with the team. And not oppose it. Not oppose it. I mean, I'll, I'll give you tens of examples to do that. Uh, you know that um, uh, Vajpayee Musharraf uh, summit in uh, Agra. Agra. Uh, I think uh, to the best of my understanding, they were fairly close uh, to a deal or they were fairly uh, you know, close to an agreement on many things. But the team kind of opposed it and therefore the summit didn't happen. Then Mr. Vajpayee wanted to fire Mr. Modi. After 2002? In 2002. But then the team kind of opposed it and the Prime Minister went along. So there are tens of examples within the BJP we were given where uh, we were clearly told that the president presides, the team decides. Now from that kind of a party, and you know, during Mr. Vajpayee's uh, tenure, I could see my, I, you know, multiple times where he, uh, in a way, uh, went by the decision of the team. Now from that stage to being a party of one and a half leaders, he knows the party far more than I do. He has been with the party uh, BJP far longer than I have. Pradhu ji, you are sad that you are not in the party. You are using the same language today. You are saying that today's IT cell, which you have not done, is going to be a crazy person. You have said that madness has gripped the BJP. It desires to win at any cost, by any means. And you are saying that after 2014, the BJP IT cell was economical with the truth. Today, the wrong news, the wrong news, the fake news. You know, terrorizing people online. Bapre, bapre. Absolutely, terrorizing people online. I mean, I would go to that extent. So, uh, it's kind of a massive, massive, you know, transformation. What I feel sad about is not so much the IT cell, you know, but the death of the idealism with which I came to the BJP. 11 years of my life, I gave to the party. And now you regret it? Uh, yes, in a way. I mean, uh, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't have cared if the BJP had not come to power for maybe, you know, 20 years. But as long as it kind of adhered to a value system. You said that बहुत सारे ये जो काम हैं, जो trolling का काम है, जो गलत खबर है, जो जो false news है, वो आप जानबूझ के ऐसा नहीं है कि आप misinformed हैं, आप जानते हैं ये गलत सूचना है, फिर भी आप इसका वितरण कर रहे हैं, you are outsourcing this work क्योंकि you don't want to leave behind any digital footprints or fingerprints, ये जो से WhatsApp जैसे in 2009, the social media had a limited impact. But until 2014, 
इट बिकेम मीडिया और आज आने वाले आम चुनाव 2019 में आप कह रहे कि दिस विल बी यूज वाइडली नॉट जस्ट बाय द बीजेपी ऑल पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज सो वट डू थिंक इज गोइंग टू हैपन in the next few months in the run up to the elections i think first of all there's going to be huge amount of noise okay social media clutter or chatter is kind of going to increase and from all political parties but there's a silver lining which i have just seen in this election and hopefully by the next general elections uh, 2024 it will be much in play and that is the emergence of many sites which track fake news and send out alerts today we have quite a few of quite them quite a few of them quite a few all of them. news Absolutely. boom live Absolutely. sm hopes Absolutely. there all bsm bahut sare aur jo mukhya dhara mein hai jo lok madhyam ka sangstha even the mainstream organizations yes. like times of india and others yes. they are also setting up their own oh, oh. sort of fact checking fact checking absolutely uh, absolutely groups so cells yes i think this is this is this has been a huge transformation since 2014 2014 whatever came on social media was taken as gospel truth by uh, people by the ordinary uh, you know citizen but today many people have realized this phenomena of fake news many uh, people therefore would be really circumspect before consuming any of the information that any of the political parties would be uh, you know dishing out but the clearly be devil's advocate sure. what the bjp had been doing now the congress is doing absolutely. others are doing absolutely so all fair in love and love war, and war right. in elections or aap galat soochna kuch aap vitran kar rahe hain sabko bata rahe hain aur aapka jo aap jo rajnitik ha jo opponent wo bhi wo hi kar rahe hain wo bhi kar rahe hain so so this is actually bad for democracy isn't it this is bad for democracy but i also see it as a maturing of the uh, consumer of the you know the user the citizen in terms of the consumption of news in the era of print print was holy i mean whatever came in print you more or less kind of uh, yani ki jo chap ke aaye hain kagze ke kagze mein so there was some sanctity ha vishwasanita bahut thi people had credibility absolutely so today we have moved from a print uh, as the core as the main uh, you know form of media to digital and i think a little bit of a maturing of the audience was required and that i see its emergence it has not become a completely matured uh, you know user uh, of digital media but i see as i said i see a silver lining to this dark cloud okay let me ask you a question when me and a colleague of mine cyril sam we were writing this series of articles on facebooks mm-hmm. and facebooks activities in india we quoted you mm-hmm. and we asked you specifically how you reacted to a person like shivnath tokral okay. who is holding an important position in facebook in india okay. given his background sure ndtv television anchor joins the sr group uh, supports a portal called mera bharosa uh, joins kanagi foundation and then uh, joins facebook and in our article to be talked about alleged conflicts of interest because an organization run by his wife and partner is also being um, financially supported by facebook how do you see a digital monopoly like facebook which is not just facebook it also is whatsapp it's also instagram well, how do you see their role in the coming months leading up to the general elections you know i would have been very scared of someone like facebook i do don't mean just facebook someone a monopoly uh, a virtual monopoly like facebook uh a couple of years back but you know after the kind of a scrutiny facebook is going through in uh, europe across the world across the world in the united states i think uh, they would be very very careful about uh, uh you know the about letting their platform be used as a platform for mischief as far as indian elections are concerned because the payback could be very very huge tomorrow there is a change in the government india is a big market for them they got to be very very careful you you think 
uh, as the economists claim that Facebook might go the Yahoo way, that these digital monopolies should be broken up into smaller absolutely. competing entities. Absolutely. The way Bell was. Bell was. Bell was. AT&T. AT&T, AT&T, yes. AT&T was, absolutely. Today, whether it's a Google, whether it's a Facebook, you know, they are, you know, Amazon, they are, uh, you know, behemoths. They can move markets. They can influence people. They can influence outcomes. So I think... Uh, uh, globally, there needs to be a greater scrutiny, and I'm very glad, particularly the European Union. They are putting, making them, you know, uh, they're putting a real, real strong spotlight on their activities. So that is what gives me a little hope. Okay. My last question to you What advice do you have to those who are viewing our conversation? आप तो भारतीय जनता पार्टी का जो इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी सेल आईटी सेल स्थापन किया था 2007 में 8 साल बाद आपने पार्टी छोड़ दिया आज आप प्रधानमंत्री मोदी जी का एक तरह से हम बोले खिलाफ में आप काम कर रहे हैं तो ये जो सोशल मीडिया में जो खबरें या गलत खबरें गलत सूचना लोग वितरण कर रहे हैं एकदम गांव-गांव में फैल गया आज ऐसा नहीं है कि सिर्फ शहर में कुछ आ, अमीर लोग आज जो मोबाइल खरीद मो, सकते हैं हां सबके पास सबके है, पास है। एक बहुत सारे 30 35 करोड़ भारतीय नागरिक के पास एक मोबाइल फोन स्मार्टफोन है यानी कि चलाक चलामान दूरभाष यंत्र है और आप देखिए व्हाट एडवाइस वुड यू गिव देम अबाउट व्हाट दे गेट ऑन व्हाट्सएप व्हाट दे गेट ऑन द सोशल मीडिया आप क्या सलाह देंगे I think, uh, you know, in today's day and age, nobody can be a passive consumer of news. I think it is, uh, you know, citizenship is not a once in a five year, uh, uh, you know, vote uh, giving, uh, you know, activity. Citizenship requires far more engagement with the processes of the state and to be aware of the processes of the state, you need to be with the news. And with the news, you cannot consume it passively the way you did earlier. You, to, you need to bring in your own uh, lens of scrutiny. You need to figure out that the news that you are getting, is it true? Is it correct? And what is behind the news? You need to have far more involvement with the news that you are consuming. That is what I would say to you. Don't take anything blindly. Thank you so Thank much, you. Pradyut, Thank you. for coming to the studio of NewsClick and Thank giving you. us your views. You've just heard and watched Pradyut Bora. He founded the Bharti Janta Party's information technology cell in 2007. And today, he's a bitter critic of the party. And he warns all users of the social media to keep questioning, to be careful, to doubt the veracity of all the information that's widely disseminated on the social media. What he suggests is keep questioning, 